Good morning. Welcome to Bethel United Methodist Church. We gather each week because we are among the people who believe that a life connected to God and a life connected to one another is the most meaningful life there is. So for all of you gathered here and others who join us online, we welcome you and pray that as we share these moments of worship together that our life will be enriched and our faith will be deepened and we will be given a resurrection faith that allows us to live differently in the world. So welcome. For the Christian church, Easter is not over. These are the days of Easter, Easter tide. For 50 days, we remember and celebrate Easter. And so the beautiful cross that uh, began to grace our sanctuary last Sunday and the Paschal candle that is our resurrection candle. It's a candle that burns for the great 50 days of Easter. And then every time there's a baptism, because that's new life, and every time there's a funeral, because that's new life, this is the new life, uh, resurrection life. And so um, we, we have these symbols still with um, flowers in the window and beauty all around us. It is the uh, occasion to say thank you to so many who worked diligently, Flower Guild, um, Chancel Guild, music, handbells, children's choir, who gave their very best that we might um, walk through the days of Lent to arrive at Holy Week and the crescendo of Easter. But let's not lose our Easter faith as we continue to walk these days. And it's my hope that as we gather this morning, we will um, continue to stoke the fire of that Easter faith together. You'll see on the back of your bulletin all the ways that Bethel offers us to grow our faith. Uh, a study begins this afternoon. Many of you have signed up for that. Great Hymns of Faith is a, a choir offering for us two Friday nights from now. There are opportunities to learn more about Bethel, all about Bethel. If you were a guest ready to take the next step of inquiry and exploration about membership in the life of this church, you'll see words about all of these things here and I commend them to you, but for now. In the beauty of this sun-drenched sanctuary during this Easter tide, I invite you to breathe deeply of the gift that is your life as together we make that sometimes difficult but always necessary transition from getting here to being here as we prepare our hearts now to worship God.
different as we are, we come to profess our faith in a God who creates and is creating, in Jesus who redeems and is redeeming, and the spirit that sustains and is sustaining us still. In that confidence, let us give voice to our faith with words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. In these moments, we gather in our prayers for those whose lives are linked with ours, for concerns and joys that we know about and hold dear, and for others whom we don't know, but God surely does. There is a, a young girl partners with us in Sierra Leone, who is recovering from heart surgery. Eh, we want to remember her. This church has a vested interest in care of her medical care. We've made contributions and um, deeply desire full and complete healing for her. Um, Ron Wilson has surgery upcoming this Tuesday, and we pray for you, Ron. Um, Karen and Ed are back after well, for Karen, months of three months of being in um, New Zealand, and it's good to have you back home at Bethel, both of you. Um, others here hold many things, um, some that you would, if you could, speak aloud because the joy is so great, and others you can't because the words would get stuck in your throat. But there is one who hears and knows and cares. And in that confidence, let us gather our prayers and offer them to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, on this spring morning, remind us again of the truth at the heart of creation, that day follows night, that spring follows winter, and ultimately that life follows death that you are always and everywhere about the work of renewal, loss and renewal, loss and renewal, the transformation of all things, the creation and our own very lives. Write Easter's truth on our hearts and give us eyes to see in our everyday lives this truth etched in as the pattern of our faith. We pause to pray for those who stand in need of your healing touch. We remember before you today Martin and Pat and Clyde and Nancy, John, Howard, Ellen, Johnny Jr., Henrietta, Bert, Steve, Michael, Randy, Paul, Marion, Ellen, Nina, Ron. For these and others we lift to you. Pray that you would come 
with healing and hope and strength and help, reassurance, and that you would be at work to make all things new. In that confidence, we offer these and all our many prayers to your good care. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. In these moments, we always try to remember those whose, um, whose needs are great, and we want to have a part in being an answer to some of the prayers we pray. So we pause now to receive our morning offering, coming, bring our own selves, an embodiment of our desire to give um, so that others might be blessed. This is our opportunity now.
may be seated while other children come and join Miss Nova for moments of Children's Church. Good morning. Thank y'all for doing the offering. Good morning, Talbert. Sit right here by your brother. There you go. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Come on, have a seat. Ooh. How many of you have seen or heard of this book before? Any of you? Yep. yep. Okay. A long time ago, a man named Mr. Ripley started collecting interesting facts, things that people didn't believe were true, but they were. And he started writing books and having a show, and he, his name is Ripley, and it's called Ripley's Believe It or Not. Do you believe this? That a chicken laid a square egg? Yes, believe it or not. Do you believe that astronauts grew chili peppers in space and made tacos? Yes, believe it or not. So, anyway. Do you believe that Joy Chestnut, who is the world's reigning hot dog eating champion, ate 100 hot dogs? Yeah. No, he didn't. Ha, I gotcha. <laughs> he did 76. I did not hot dogs. <laughs> and then the one that was right. not. Right. Matt Stone, do you believe that he ate a McDonald's Happy Meal in 15 seconds? No. True. True. 15.22 seconds he ate a burger, fries, and soda. Would, yeah, must have been. Would you say that you wanted to see that to believe it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, that leads me to what the scripture's about today. Jesus has risen from the dead, and the ladies went and told the disciples that Jesus was alive, and they are just like so excited. But one of the disciples named, did anybody remember? Thomas says, mm -mm, I don't believe it. I need to see that Jesus is alive. Well, eventually, Jesus appeared with where the disciples were meeting, and there he was. And Thomas walked up to him and said, I don't believe you're here. Jesus held out his hands and said, look at my wounds. Because remember, he was nailed to the cross. Thomas says, now I believe because I have seen it. But you know what Jesus said after that? Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. That's what's important today to remember. We didn't see Jesus arise from the dead, but we believe because we have what? Faith. And that's what's important, to believe. Even like Ripley, he could started collecting the believe it's or nots, and he put them in a book, and he, has a tele he had a television show for years doing that. People... Sometimes just sort of doubt. And that's why they used to call Thomas Doubting Thomas because he didn't believe Jesus was alive. But when he saw Jesus, he was. But Jesus went one step further and said, Blessed are those who believe what they have not seen, but have faith and believe in their where? Heart. And that's what we need to remember. All right? Let's say our prayer. Dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus, who is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. And all of God's people say, Amen. All right, let's go.
Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. There are not too many week after stories in the Bible. The week after the first resurrection morning, Mark is so anxious to get us to the empty tomb that the story ends there. Matthew sends a message that says, have the disciples meet me in Galilee. I'm going back to where it all started. I'm not through yet. There you'll find me. And he bids them um, his peace and he commissions them for his ministry. Luke has Jesus leaving Jerusalem, walking on that seven-mile journey to a town called Emmaus, and it's John. It's John who will say the week after. What it means to live with resurrection faith the week after. And so as we gather around this story of the week after, on this week after, um, may God inspire us with new insight and deeper faith. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, come now and grow our faith. Come and deepen our hope, strengthen our love. Come and water within each of us the desire to be your faithful family forever. Amen. So at the end of the gospel message that we heard today read, it says, the, the writer, John, says, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That's his why. John has recorded this book. Before it was put in the library that we call the Bible, it was a book, and he ended the book, almost the end of the book, saying, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not recorded here, but, but these are recorded so that you may come to believe 
that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing have life in his name. And I'm really glad he did that because for John, the writer, he thought the story of Thomas would help some of us come to believe. The gospel writer John does not dismiss people who do not have instantaneous faith that is unshakable. John knows that transformation sometimes comes as an aha and sometimes unfolds over time. And I, for one, am grateful that the author of the book of John, the Gospel of John, says all of these, there are many other things I could have told you about, but these are collected so that you may come to believe. Now, often we think of um, Thomas as the one who um, was given the moniker Doubting Thomas, but let's just call him an honest man, can we? For whatever reason, maybe he had gone to pick up the coffee for the morning run, or maybe he had gone to gather food to bring back. Everybody else is behind locked doors. They are afraid. And, and Thomas comes back and finds that he has missed the occasion of an encounter with Jesus. They tell him excitedly, we have, we have seen the Lord. And though they have an experience of Jesus, Thomas wants one of his own. And who can blame him? If we're honest, don't we all yearn for, long for, real encounters with the living Lord. They, they think that um, what he needs is the DNA. Like, how do you prove that the one I saw that was dead is alive? Where's the DNA? But I think there's something different. Do you, do you remember what Thomas asks for? He asks for, unless I see the scars in his hands, unless I place my hand in his side, I will not believe. It's not DNA he's after here. It is, does he have scars? John puts this story in here because Thomas' question is not death avoided. It is about death transformed. Let me say this one more time because this is the heart of Easter faith. This is not death avoided. Jesus asleep in the tomb. God miraculously raises him and he's good as new no harm done. No, this is not death avoided. This is death transformed. And Thomas wants to know if that is true. If this risen one has within him the ability to transform, if God is the one who has the ability to transform death into life. So I've thought about that this week, and I've seen, I've seen this show up at least four times. I tell you these things so that you might think of three or four times of your own that you have seen, not death avoided, but death transformed. Death and resurrection loss and renewal, life after death. The first starts in my backyard. So um, I'm an upstate girl um, by, by raising, and I'm used to all the leaves falling in the fall. I'm not used to leaves falling in the spring. And probably as a comfort to my own, um, you know, 
honing device. There's just one tree in the backyard that is a fall loses the leaves tree. Everything else are the trees that shed their brown leaves as they sprout green leaves in the spring. But there's this one tree that all of winter I can see across the marsh to the house on the other side. And then miraculously, um, in spring, then these little buds begin to bloom. Well, I've been worried about that tree. Um, last year at the parsonage, the big tree in the front um, didn't make it. It had had some sort of disease and it had to be taken down. And I keep looking at this tree that I see every day um, right out the window of the den and it is as bare as bare can be. And last Saturday, the day before Easter, I even got out my binoculars. Like, please tell me this tree is going to, and there were just like, just, I, I thought I could see, not anything green, but just almost red, maybe just a little um, sap rising, maybe. And sure enough, sure enough, throughout this week, every day, every morning, I go and see little sprouts of green more. It's loss and renewal written in the fabric of creation. Last Sunday, as we gathered for Easter, um, Emily and Derek Sly, along with Emily's parents and sister, joined us for worship. It was the first time they had come back to worship following the loss of Emily and Caroline's brother and the sin's son. A heart-rending, heart-breaking loss. And they came and they sat back here They came to express Easter faith in the midst of so great a loss. And as they, as we all stood to sing, I could see that sometimes they couldn't. The words got stuck in their throat, but you sang for them until they can sing again. Our story is not death avoided. It is death transformed. And they believe it. They depend on it. I think about the visit I had with John Benfield this past um, Thursday. It was the day after 64 days where he had been prone. I see you for weeks hospital, rehab, Thursday, the first day that he was able to stand. Two minutes and 10 seconds. And it was just enough life, just enough hope to help him believe that he will walk again. Loss and renewal not tragedy avoided, tragedy transformed. Even yesterday, the get over it, Cooper River Bridge run, who was the first person who made it across the finish line? I can't pronounce his name, South African. It's the wheelchair division, but he was the first one across the tape. And in an interview, he recounted the story of growing up in South Africa, and after high school, everyone is required to join the military. So in 1982, young, responsible as every other 18-year-old is for defending their country, South Africa in the midst of a war, a bomb landed two yards from him which left him a paraplegic. And over 
many countries and around the world and even in our fair city yesterday. It is not loss avoided. It is loss transformed and renewed. It is everywhere, this pattern. Everywhere where you think you are at the end, I cannot do, cannot do it anymore. Your heart is broken, and somehow you rise to see another day. Loss and renewal. And even, I would say, when we each come, which we will, to the end of our lives, our very last day, whenever that may be for any of us, it is still not death avoided, but death transformed, loss and renewal. It is really true that in the hands of God, God is working in all things, even things of loss and tragedy and heartbreak and death. God will not, ref will not let, God refuses to let, even the worst, be the last. And that is our resurrection faith. Amen. Because sometimes we are like Thomas, like we, we, don't, we don't have to have DNA, but we sure would like some tangible expression that after loss, there is the ability, the possibility of life. Maybe that's why Jesus used these gifts of bread and wine, body and blood, scars. It's not the absence of pain, it is the transformation of pain. So maybe, just maybe, even our own sharing in this meal gives us strength too for all the losses and all the renewal that will come to us. This is our family blessing. Many of you know it by heart. If you need to look in your hymnal, you'll find it on page 13 as we share this meal together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we come and offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may in turn be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence that belongs to the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wheat gathered from fields, molded together into one and broken for all. Grapes gathered from vineyards, pressed down, shaken together, running over a cup of grace for our lives. As we share communion today, there will be four servers at the head of the center aisle. So as ushers direct you, you'll come by way of the center aisle, be given a piece of bread, and then you'll be asked to take a cup and then receive both of these together and pause to kneel around the chancel area for as long as you like. If you um, prefer to stand or simply return to your seat to pray there, this is um, an encounter that you might have with the living Lord today. Those who are prepared to serve, I invite them to come forward and the choir, if you would, come and lead us and as we begin.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Send us forth into the world that we may give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing. forth into this world with Easter faith, with resurrection faith, which is a faith that looks for renewal after loss, not death avoided, death, loss, transformed. It is everywhere. Go with your eyes and hearts open to live this resurrected life. And as you go, may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. <laughs>